This time on The Drive, Tyler and Corey make another stand adjustment to make one last attempt at putting down a buck in archery season. While Tyler is filming his hunts in Pennsylvania, Corey goes west without the cameras to Ohio and Kansas, tagging two bucks and comes back only to smoke another. And the first season comes to a close in this final episode as the family tradition comes back to where it started as Corey's dad, Calvin, puts down a doe. The Drive is brought to you by Covert Scouting Cameras, Luminoc, Motion Camera Arms, Beach Ridge Outfitters, Quaker Boy Game Calls, and Swarhout Skull Works. Well, it's November 1st, and we're back out here at the property. Um, as you'll be able to see, we've we moved this set. We got here early. We moved this set. We were actually about 125 yards west of here over in the soybeans, but the, they've just devoured them and there's nothing left of them. And deer seem to be concentrating out here in what's left of this clover. I don't even know what they're eating because there's really nothing there. But we figured we better be where the deer are. Um, it's about time these bucks are going to be starting to think about rutting. So tonight, brought the Quaker Boy Brawler. We get a nice buck out here. We're gonna try it out. See if we can't get him in the bow range. There's been lots of does coming out here. So there's lots of potential uh, does for them to be checking. We just haven't seen it yet. So hopefully tonight will be different. We decided to get in there early that afternoon and move that set. And if any of you have hunted for very long and moved tree stands around, you know what usually happens. When you move to where the deer were, they end up coming out where you were. And that's exactly what happened here. On the last few evenings we hunted in there, the deer were coming out to our east and feeding on this what was left of the clover and they weren't even bothering these soybeans at all. So we moved in that direction and where the deer come out, right where the soybeans were and right about where we had had our 
previous setup. And then the one nice buck that we do see, it was late when he came out, the light was fading, and it just, even though it was November 1st, it just did not seem like the rut was ready to kick off yet. With Dad going out west, I took to the mountains up behind his house, and uh, I was able to see some doe, a couple spikes. Uh, the big deer, the big bucks that we were scouting in the uh, preseason disappeared, and that's just kind of the way our luck goes. Uh, but it was a nice day, a couple days out in the woods, uh, nice scenery, especially in the snow, and it was just a, a good time to be out, even though he was out west, killing deer and having a good time. Uh, can't really beat being out in the woods. Bad day in the woods beats a good day at work, so I was happy just to be out. We didn't have much for success after my doe kill, and it went all the way up into rifle season until the first day until Dad finally put one down. We went out to the field where we were hunting archery and got together, and I took my brother Colin up with some cameras, thinking that you know we were gonna be in the right spot, like my dad said, and that's when we heard the shot, and we knew right away that the uh, luckiest man that I know took his third buck of the season. They took the camera equipment and went up on top and I decided I would just stay down at one of the lower spots uh, right along the road that leads up into the field. And basically what it is is a pile of rocks that you lay in and watch the lower part of the field uh, where they would not be able to see or shoot to. And at 4.30, uh, I ended my season in Pennsylvania and harvested a, a nice eight point buck from the property. There was a little doe came out at five after four and after like 10 minutes, she kept looking back down the woods. And I looked down and I saw the back of the deer had his head down. I thought, ah, it's the mother. So the little one moved his head and I saw this side. And then he picked his head up, I saw he was pretty wide. So I saw he had four on each side. You know what? Yeah, it does, man. It might only be the first day. I had two weeks to hunt, but done a lot of hunting this fall, so I can't complain. And he's not one of the ones we were after, but he ain't bad. Yeah, I don't think he's one of the ones that we were seeing, unless he got broke up. No, he isn't one of the ones. I had a very good year this year, uh, November 13th, my last day, last evening to hunt on our property uh, we lease in Ohio. I was fortunate enough to take uh, what ended up being a seven point, should, it was a nine, he had a couple broken points. Uh, the rut was starting to kick in out there. The bucks were receptive to calling. I grunted this buck in uh, from about 100 yards and he came into about 12 yards from the tree I was in, harvested him. Um, that buck, it was, it was a nice bow kill. And that one is currently at Swarthout Skull Works, uh, where it's waiting to be done as a European mount. They do great work, and I wouldn't even think of taking it anywhere else for that. Uh, then I went on to Kansas the following week and was fortunate enough to harvest a, a, a mainframe eight with a kicker off of his uh, one G2. Um, was taken during some, some of the worst conditions I've bow hunted in. It, it was raining and windy and and then temperature dropped and it froze. So I was, I was very pleased to harvest that buck. He was my best bow buck yet. Um, and it was just a, a great season. And apparently the decision I made to harvest that Pennsylvania buck the first evening of rifle season uh, was the right one to make because three hours after I harvested that deer, I had come down with the flu and was sick for about a week and had to pay a visit to the doctor. and was on antibiotics. so. As it turned out, I guess that was the right choice because I would have not been able to hunt for about a week after that. In the middle of October, we have an antlerless season uh, where you can use a muzzleloader. And this year I took my father out 
who was 83 years old, took him out to hunt over a food plot uh, in a double bull blind with my Thompson Center inline muzzle loader. And just before dark, a, a single doe came out in the food plot to feed, and he was able to harvest that deer with the muzzle loader. Well, tonight's the last evening of the muzzle loader, early muzzle loader, doe season, and junior and senior rifle hunt. Uh, so we're back out tonight. Had about a bout of flu in the family this week. We haven't been able to get out. Uh, we come down in here to set the blind up. There was already six does out. Um, but we know there's a lot more here, so we're confident that there should be more show up here this afternoon. So we'll see what happens. And that hunt with my father was, it was really special because 83 years old, still be able to go out and harvest a deer. Um, it, was, it was exciting and I'm glad I was able to be a part of it. Came in and what, I, it came in and what all happened? Talk me through it. We had to wait for him to turn around and he didn't come towards us and they turned and when he got angled away, they pulled up and got a bead on him. And, Squeeze the trigger and away he went. That smoke flew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All in all, I'd have to count the 2013 season as a success. Um, you know, with me getting my first deer with a bow, that was huge for me. I finally broke the ice, and I think we know how to uh, kind of hunt these deer next year. I think we finally have them figured out. And you know, just with Colin getting out, that's good for him. He hasn't got a whole lot, so the fact that he was out was great. And you know, with, with Dad taking uh, his his second year and out of three years or four years taking three bucks uh, that's huge too so I would I would have to say that our season here in 2013 was a success and I think we're gonna have an even better season next year Be sure you catch The Drive when it returns this spring as Corey and Tyler smash some gobblers. The Drive, a Rack Devil Media production.